YouTube, welcome back. It's your brother in Christ, Weston. Thanks for joining me today. So we're continuing why the series on why I believe the rapture happens on Rosh Hashanah. So let's get into it. Picking back up where we left off. This is uh, the website called For Those Who Are Interested, and I have been going over this. Um, we are on uh, part two of this called Yom Hadin, or the Day of Judgment. So what I'm going to do is read the article, give you everything that's in the article, then I'm going to hop over to my notes that I have from Joseph Good, the videos that I put you on to last uh, channel. So to take a look, and you can take those uh, those notes and look at those and then add to them, take away, whatever you might want to do. And then if, um, if you have a revised version or something better, please send it my way. Um, but you can have them, and I would highly recommend you go watch those videos. Um, and then if there's anything else that you can find, um what is it uh um uh yeah share it so i can uh have it and i can watch it and so anyways let's get into it yom hadin the day of judgment another name for rosh hashanah is yom hadin the day of judgment jewish tradition says that on this day god would sit in the court and all men would pass before him to be judged three great books are will be opened as each man is weighed in the balance and placed into three categories and this comes out of the talmud Rosh Hashanah 6b. Now, remember last week, our last um, uh, video, we talked about that there were three groups. There is the Zadakim, the righteous ones. There are the book of the uh, the, the sinners or the average people. Um, and then there are the Rashim, the eternally wicked ones, the ones who have eternally rejected Christ. Um, it has been taught that the school of Shammai says that there will be three classes on the final day of judgment, one of holy righteousness, one of holy wicked, and one of the intermediates or the in-between. In terms of pre-tribulation rapture, the categories would be as follow. Totally righteous are those who keep the word of God. The righteous are separated and will be with God. This is known to the Bible believer as the rapture, which is in Hebrew is Natsal. More on that later. Yes, so I need to I need to pull up an article talking about Natsal. I didn't I learned that from another brother in Christ. Uh, um, Dr. Barry Awe, who, who knew way more about uh, some of the Hebrew roots than I did. And um, and that word is, is important. I need to do a study on that and, and make a video. So remind me. Um, during the tribulation, uh, they are sealed and protected by God from the Antichrist and God's judgment. And then B, the 144,000 are sealed with God's seal and protection. So um, uh, those, are, those would be three different categories of people who are totally righteous and people who will be saved. Um, what is it? Uh, and then it says, uh, see the ones who have kept the commandments, uh, uh, totally unrighteous are those who take the mark and this, the wicked will face the wrath of God during the tribulation period called Yamim Noraim, uh, known in Hebrew as Shavle, uh, Shavle Shel Mashiach and will never repent. So that adds up with what Joseph said. Joseph said that they are eternally wicked. They will never, never repent, never accept Christ. They have eternally rejected Christ. And so they are wicked in the book of the Rashim, which they can never get out of. But those who have believed are written in the book of life, which they can never get out of. Praise the Lamb. And then there are those who haven't made a decision, which is the book of the average or the book of the sinners, uh, the book of the average people um, who are still waiting to be written in one of the other books. Uh, it says here, once you are written in the book of the wicked, you can never get out of it. That that uh, that um, lines up with what Joseph said, Revelation seventeen eight. These are people who never ever will accept Messiah Yeshua. Second Thessalonians uh, two nine and twelve says this: the coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power, uh, false signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception. For those key word key win. Here's another one: those who are perishing. If you're a believer in Christ, you are never perishing. Anytime you that means death. But uh, anytime you're a non-believer, you're always considered in the Bible perishing. You'll just go read every scripture and you'll see it. And those who are asleep, sleep in Christ. Those are means those are those are believers who have fallen asleep waiting. Their bodies are in the ground. Their spirits are with the Lord. That's what Paul says to be out of the body, to be present with the Lord. So they go up to the Lord in their body, in their, in their, their spirit, waiting on the body, which is asleep in the ground, to be married back together with a given uh, celestial body or transformed um, uh, to be just like Jesus' body. Um, because they refuse to love the truth is so to be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They refuse to believe the truth, therefore refusing to be saved. They are doomed by their choice to refuse God through Jesus. There is a doomed group who will worship the beast, Revelation 19. Uh, these will not repent despite the judgments, Revelation 9, Revelation 16. If you, if you look up through the, I think it's the trumpet judgments, um, uh, there are those who don't repent, even though wickedness is happening, demons are roaming the earth. Uh, God is striking them, even in the bowls. When the bowls are poured out, God is, is, is casting sores on them. And they, it literally says at the bottom, and they would not repent. Um, crazy to think that there's a people group 
where all these things can happen. And I, I read from a literal hermeneutic. So that is how I, I read the entire Bible. Read it from a literal perspective, literal being the filter first. And I literally will then move to a symbolic or a, a metaphor or an allegory. But I don't start from the opposites of any of those. I read at, at face value, this is what the Lord means, this is what he's saying. And I allow scripture to then lead me into this is symbolism or has a double meaning. And so, um, uh, so when all these things are happening, I believe there will be this, these crazy, wicked demons that are coming out of the pit with Abaddon um, um, or Abaddon. What is that? Abaddon or Abaddon? Um, uh, the king of the prince of hell, the king of hell, um, or the destroyer that comes out. And uh, I believe there are angels under the river Euphrates. I believe they have been locked up, like the Book of Enoch says, um, and uh, and gives us a depiction of that, which is nuts. Uh, anyways, let's continue. Uh, they're neither righteous nor unrighteous are those who will make a decision during the tribulation. The ones who will miss the rapture must repent to get into the book of life. They are in between. In the Greek, it seems to indicate they had a knowledge of God, but were not prepared to meet the Lord at the rapture. They have to make their robes white as Christians. Now our garments are spotless and clean. And he references Matthew 25 and Revelation 3, 4. Now I have looked at this and I have always said it's different because when you look in Revelation, there are people, it says, um, I'm paraphrasing here and I will find the scripture for you. It says that they will wash their robes in the blood of the lamb to make them spotless and clean. Um, whereas Jesus, his shed blood for us washes us and he washes us, not we wash wash our blood, our, 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 our sins or our garments in the blood of the lamb. He washes us and then he demonstrates that by doing that with, uh, with all the disciples. When he says, if you, if I won't let me do this, you have no part with me. Um, so I have always looked at it as these are a different people group. They're righteous, but I don't know if they're the bride. I would say the ones, this is this is my, my opinion and belief that the bride are people who believe on Christ, right? And they will be uh, the bride at the rapture. Everybody else who gets picked up along the way, the 144,000, I don't know if they're the bride. They seem like a separate people group. Um, I could be wrong, totally fine with that. Uh, the people who are dying in the tribulation and being birthed into Messiah, the birth pangs, um, I don't believe they're the bride. I think they are the guests of the wedding. They go into the wedding to be prepared. That's the 10 virgins, the 10 wise and the 10 foolish. Um, but that's a hot take. I don't, have an, I don't have an issue with them being the bride. What I'm saying is, is, is as I've seen, it's different. And it may, could, it may just be that they're the bride, but the way they become the bride is different from how I became the bride. And so totally fine with that as well. Uh, it's just something that uh, theologically that I've looked at and like, man, this just eating on it, dwelling on it. And if you have any um, uh, scriptures for that, uh, and the only reason I say that is because when people start to look at that, they start to look at eschatological positions and say that pre-trip is not true because you have all these other Christians here. And it's like, well, no, they're not Christians now. They are Christians later and they were unbelievers as of now. And so it makes sense. Um, anyways, the in-between person has until Yom Kippur, until his fate is sealed forever. In other words, the in-between person ha will have until the end of the seven-year tribulation to repent and turn to God. The in-between person on Rosh Hashanah is judged by God and is, either, is neither written in the book of life or the book of the wicked. His fate is yet to be decided. The in-between person and the wicked have to go through the awesome days, which is the days of all, the seven days between Tishri 1, Tishri 2, then you have... Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then Tishri 10, right? Right here uh, is Day of Atonement, then five days later is Tabernacles. Um, you know, I have to go through the tribulation until they reach Yom Kippur, the end of the tribulation, which, the, which their fate is sealed, which it goes back to what Joseph Good said in my notes as well on those videos. Check them out. Um, they choose between the mark or martyrdom. That's why we see them ruling and reigning with Christ for a thousand years. That's why it says that they, when they would not accept the image, the worship of the beast, or take uh, or take the mark, that they were beheaded for their witness. Choice between life and death is the theme of Yom Kippur. And then it says here, there are 12 months in a year and there are 12 tribes in Israel. Every month of the Jewish year has its representative tribe. The month of Tishri is known by the uh, the month of the tribe of Dan. This is symbolic significance for Dan for what was born to Bilhah, Rachel's maid. Rachel said, God hath judged me, Dan and I, and hath also heard my voice. Genesis bear a sheet. 30 verse 6. D Dan and Dean, as in Yom Hadin, the day of judgment, are both derived from the same root, symbolizing that Tishri is the time of divine judgment and forgiveness. So let's uh, ski daddle over to my notes here that I have. This is all for episode two. It's called the coronation of the Messiah. So what will happen when we get there? Um, 
Uh, I'm just going to read a couple of a couple of highlights here. I don't want to take too long on this. Romans 9 shows us that the Jews are giving giving the liturgy, the services, the ceremonies, and teach about Jesus, which is totally true. Paul says this. Uh, he says that they have been given the oracles of God, the commandments of God. They were meant, they are the elect nation, to te the elect people uh, to teach the nations, Gentiles, about the Messiah through feasts, through ceremonies, through culture, through the, through, uh, uh, the Torah, through Old Testament, um, through who, who they've been called as the elect, but they failed. Um, it says, Hamalek, the king, that means king, and that the king is then crowned on Rosh Hashanah. The Jewish expectation is that Messiah will have his coronation on Rosh Hashanah. Um, skip over some of this. It says, Hebrews 12, there was a, a, a there, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Let aside every weight and run the race, which is awesome. I had in a, like in just a revelation of the witnesses um, and what this adds up with what Joseph Good is saying. So mind you, I am not trying to just take these things and, and make up my own and make up doctrine or make up whatever. I'm trying to study Hebrew culture and Hebrew uh, idioms and Hebrew catchphrases and Hebrew words and what Hebrews did when they wanted to hang out and the funny things they said or cer certain sayings. You know how we say right now in, in America, um, uh, what is it? Something's hot or somebody uh, caught a lit, or so, somebody's lit, right? It means somebody is is crazy, or, or somebody is is uh, juiced up, right? We use all these weird words, right, that we don't use the actual, we use it for another meaning, right? So when we say somebody's really, really has a lot of energy, we could say they're juiced, they're hyped, they're lit, they're 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 hot, uh, or I'm, I'm mad, and they can say, I'm heated. Man, I'm so heated right now. Um, see what I'm saying? So think about that and how much we have and then go back to Hebrew, uh, uh, Hebrew culture, ancient Hebrew culture, Jewish weddings type of stuff, and then look at all the breadth of the things that you would want to know and understand, and uh, and you would be like, wow, I should be studying this. Um, okay, it says um, the cloud of witnesses are the actual believers, the believers who have died in Christ and gone to be with the Lord. So when the Lord said, "I've come with a great cloud of witnesses," or "I've come, I come on the clouds," He's not only coming on the clouds. The clouds also symbolize a double meaning here: that they are uh, 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 the dead in Christ who are re ready and waiting to receive their bodies. Um, let's see here. Uh, Revelation 4 and 5, the Jewish expectation is that on the services of Rosh Hashanah, the gates are opened. We talked about that. They open the Messiah uh, and the Messiah himself will enter the gate. Look at Revelation 4 for this. Revelation 4, 1, I've always believed is the rapture. Um, I saw 24 thrones, 24 elders. This means the court is seated, which is so important, um, which makes a call back to Daniel 7. Um, Daniel Daniel 12. Ah, goodness gracious. I'll find it for you. Revelation 4, the living creatures, the lion, the calf, the man, and the eagle. The lion is the, it represents the king. That's the book of Matthew. It means kingship of Jesus. The calf and the ox is the servant. Um, and that equals Mark. And the, uh, Mark talks about Jesus, the servant. Uh, Luke is talking about Jesus, the man. Uh, John is talking about uh, the divine nature of Jesus. So when you go back and read the gospels, you'll see all of that there. And you're like, wow, this is, that makes sense. So, um, uh, it says, uh, Psalm 45 is a marriage psalm, a coronation psalm, the book of the Telahim. The Telahim is a psalm. So that's what it really is. It's an art scroll commentary on that. I should look up. I put notes in there like things that I should go look and buy. Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, is the day of the awakening blast. Um, Fairer than the sons of man is a saying, I think, in the book of Solomon or it's in a um, Song of Solomon or it's in Psalm 45 here. The Messiah is on the day of his coronation. is called Fairer than the sons of men. When a king is crowned in Israel, Psalm 45 is red. Uh, the right hand, a term that equals the Messiah. Messiah is the right hand of God. Anointed you, when he says anointed you, an anointed one in Hebrew is Mashiach or Messiah. And in Greek, it's Christos or Christ. Uh, Christ is the function of the Messiah. Uh, he has been empowered by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, which is the power of God. Uh, Holy Spirit is, uh, is to empower the Messiah for redemption. Psalm 45 is a marriage psalm in Rosh Hashanah. When Rosh, when Rosh Hashanah, when it approaches at the year 6,000, at the beginning of that year, there will be an awakening blast. Shofar, trumpets will blow. The gate of heaven will be opened. Um, and those who believe the Messiah will be caught into heaven, standing before God at the coronation of the Messiah taking place. Those who are being assembled to the Messiah is the bride. The marriage of the king is on Rosh Hashanah. The Messiah will keep Rosh Hashanah and will keep all and keep and will we, we will keep it as well as we are caught into heaven in Psalm 45, 10, talking about the bride. So guys, that's the video. A lot of information. Uh, if you're still here with me, thanks for staying. Um, uh, give me stuff that down in the comments that I can chew on and feed on and read on. 
Um, I'm so grateful uh, for this community of believers and uh, the, guy, the way you guys handle yourself in the comments, regardless, even if you, you're not a believer, you don't believe at all. I haven't received like crazy amounts of, of wagging the finger or anything like that. People have presented scripture, which is awesome. And, uh, and I expect that from a believer. So anyways, uh, brothers and sisters, I hope that has blessed you. I can't wait to do the rest of these videos and, uh, and I, I pray they bless you. I'll see you in the next one.